And today we have Lisa Heaton here talking about her mask in our Call to Artist Behind the Mask exhibit. Do you have any words to say? Yeah, um, and I do want to point out that I am more than six feet away from Katie and I took my mask off because I didn't think you'd be able to hear me if I kept it on. Um, for the last year or so, my husband and I made the decision to move to Cambridge. And I've been here by myself, except on weekends when he comes. He's got some professional things to tie up back in Montgomery County. And it gave me the opportunity to finally do some of the creating and the writing that I have wanted to do my whole life. And I dabbled in it, um, but I was raising three kids and all of their various and sundry activities and working full time so they could go to college. And I just, being creative and writing takes time. You have to be able to focus. And when you've got snatches of five minutes here and five minutes there, unless you're willing to stay up in the middle of the night and have long periods of time, it just, it, it's hard to make it happen. So when I got here, um, I joined the Chop Drink Writers Group and it's been a wonderful experience. Uh, I thought I was a very good writer, and I was. I've written magazine articles, and I've written an article for the Post, and some things like that. But I did not know how much I really didn't know about writing, especially when it came to more creative writing. And I learned to hone those skills. It was, it's really been wonderful, and I continue to be a member of the group. Then I took a class at a local business, the Blue Awning, and I learned different techniques that they use to make furniture and to create things. They basically get old pieces of furniture from auctions and turn them into masterpieces. And I was fascinated by this. Um, I, I found myself uh, walking around in thrift stores and seeing something and saying, I could make this that. Or I, I could imagine what I was going to do with it. So here again, I had another uh, creative outlet that I could continue to explore. And then COVID hit. And especially during the isolation period, we couldn't go out to eat at places together with friends. We couldn't even see friends. And I was all by myself. And my husband stayed in Montgomery County because it was it was such an epidemic there and he was afraid to bring it to the eastern shore and you know expose me or other people so we made the conscious decision to be separated and that lasted three months that was hard <laughs> the hardest period was during quarantine and i remember one day i, I just got i'm not a lonely person i can spend lots and lots of time by myself and i'm not unhappy but I remember one day, one of my neighbors who owns Cambridge House um, b, b came over, I mean, one of my friends, came over and stood on my front porch with the door shut. And it was the first person I'd really seen face to face and talked to for I don't know how long. And it was just, I, I thought I was gonna cry. <laughs> it was hard. And if I had not had the writing and the creative skills that I had started to grow, it, it would have been a tough period. This entire pandemic would have been tough because I have that that I can always fall back on. Um, at first, it was not quite so it, uh, viral centric. In fact, it really wasn't at all. But, I was not only separated from my husband, I was separated from my entire family. My daughter and her husband are in Texas, in graduate school, in Austin of all places. My, um, all of my sisters are in uh, Tennessee, near my mother. My mother is in Tennessee. My father is in middle Pennsylvania. My son is in Utah and my daughter-in-law and my grandson are in Arkansas. That is how spread out everybody is, and there is no way we're gonna see each other. For, for, the ones in Tennessee can, 
but there's no way we're going to see each other for a long time. And so I started writing this little newsletter. I mean, half the time it was funny, half the time it was serious, half the time it was sad. Um, a lot of times it was lonely and a little irreverent, sarcastic, whatever you want to say. And I started sending it by email to family and friends. And then other people would hear about it and say, hey, could you send that to me too? And I soon had, I think, an email string of like 70 people that I was sending this to maybe twice a week. And my sister, Sam, dubbed it the Corona Diaries because she said it helped her keep a pulse on what it was for people uh, all over the place. And you know, I would write about things such as going to Walmart to get a thermometer and ha 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 ha. They laughed at me. <laughs> thermometer. And the weird shortages at the grocery stores and just feeling isolated and hearing people say things like, well, we should just never have birthday parties again. They were ridiculous in the first place and this gives us an excuse to stop. And there were so many things that made me um, think, is life ever going to be the same for our kids as it was for us? And I would ponder on that. But all I do know is that if I had been in Bethesda rather than Cambridge during all of this, I think my soul would have been crushed. I just, I had enough here that uh, I felt it was survivable. And then I started doing a little bit more of the artwork and things like that. And one day, I was working on something and I thought, oh my gosh, do you know how far away I am from everybody? And I made a sign that I put out in my front yard that is very much like what is on my uh, mask. It was a sign that showed the distance that I am from all the people that I love. And I wondered, when am I going to see them again? And Katie asked me to bring the sign and I was going to, but I had a few technical difficulties with it. So uh, I brought instead just the, um, the wooden boards of my favorite people and places. And the very top one on, on my uh, original sign was cool seafood. Because <laughs> I live a mile from it, it's one of my favorite places in Cambridge. And then the second one, is the top one right there. It's, um, it was, it's Bethesda, which is where my husband and many friends are. Austin, Texas, my daughter, as I mentioned, Van Buren, Arkansas, my daughter-in-law and my grandson, and then um, Price, Utah, which is where my son is. And the next one is Knoxville, where some of my sisters are. Atlanta, where my other sister and her partner are, Philadelphia, my niece, Nashville, my favorite nephew, and the Army, which is where one of my other nephews, so we never know where he is. And the last one I, I had to kind of um, leave off, I didn't bring that with me today, but it's where my mom and um, uh, my dad and my in-laws are. So. When I was trying to think of an idea to make a mask, I thought how better to express uh, what COVID has done to me in both the short and long run. And that is, these are the people I love best in the world and I'm not gonna get to see them for a while. And so I pondered how many miles between us and when will I see them again? And that's what gave me the idea. But all I know about how COVID has changed my art and my writing is that it has given me the solitude that you need to be able to do that sort of thing. And for that, I hate to say I'm grateful because I'm not grateful really for much of anything about the virus other than it slowed us down and made us stop being so frantic. Um, but it has given me, an, again, the opportunity and the precious time to explore that which is creative within me. And I love your idea for the exhibit. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa, for sharing your wonderful story with us.